Boy, the hey, girl, behind, um, the girl I, behind. I can't believe this is real, but stupid ass Dave Silva says he has actually been to a Dick's last resort. He told us in our private chat here, I've been, and it's brutal if you're a fat guy. Dave, jump on with us. What was your experience like at Dick's last resort? Oh, it was it was just a joy. Um, <laughs> getting to the table. Oh, here he comes. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Yeah. Oh, can I get you all anything? What do you want, fat ass? <laughs> <laughs> and then when the food came, I remember. Um, uh, Handed everything out, tossing mine, and go. Uh, well, is that enough? <laughs> and then, like, oh, you did good. Yeah. You finished it all. Uh, I know you got room for dessert, fat ass. <laughs> it's a real joy. <laughs> when he says, when he say anything else, I can get your fat ass. Yeah, could you put your dick right here or something like that? Were you able to snap back to him? Oh, no, because you know me. I just laugh through everything. Oh, yeah. And then I cry in the dark. <laughs> We're very well aware. I, you know, <laughs> by the way, that's real. Like, Silva's a secret crier. I can't yeah. tell you, okay. back when he lived in Alabama, if I'd, if I'd go back near his area, I mean, you could hear the weeping through the door sometimes. <laughs> weeping through the door. Weeping. Mm. Tony. Um, Thanks, Dave. Dick's last resort sounds a little bit like just eating dinner with you. You mean, uh, yeah, the trash talking that goes on to my house? No, just, I mean, the way you talk to people, like, okay. uh, like when, when, when we saw you at, uh, in Chicago for Top uh -huh. Gun weekend, mm -hmm. you go, God damn, I thought Cassio was on some sort of health kick, but he's just hung out here with that big old belly. Like, yeah. has he seen a salad? Does he know what lettuce is? Uh -huh. I mean, these are Shivani-isms, and it's yeah. like, that's kind of like hanging out at Dick's Last Resort. Yeah, you know, but uh, Cassio knows better than this, you know. He knows he's still got uh, another 50 pounds he could gain, so why doesn't he do it? Airborne 37th is with us here live, and he, too, went to Dick's Last Resort, and I want you to go ahead and read what his experience was like here, Tony. Here it is. Went to Dick's Last Resort. They made a... Giant paper condom road, come dump on it and put it on a lady's head. That's. <laughs> Are they still in business? <laughs> Josh Haney is with us here live and he has a, a nice <clears throat> idea. We're finally hearing from Ric Flair as he's approaching mm -hmm. Vince McMahon at the other end of the conference room. Mm -hmm. And Josh says, Ric Flair Space Mountain is now Dick's last Dick's resort. resort. <laughs> Please tell me what this angle is. Have you already told me and it went kind of in one ear and out the other? So the idea was Ric Flair had been revealed to be at the end of 2001, right at the end of the invasion angle, that there was a mysterious benefactor and the consortium had, a, had appointed uh, a new president or a new power broker for WWE. So... Vince McMahon has only had control of 50% of the company and Ric Flair's had control of the other 50%. And they're at an impasse here and Vince wants him gone. He wants Rick out of this and he doesn't feel like he should be wrestling the undertaker at WrestleMania or punching fans or, or, or. So it's just a political power play with the board of directors and it's all a little silly. And how weird does this look? The NWO on Monday night raw, like when you see the NWO and you see the little bug in the corner that's got the scratch logo and there's Hogan Hall and Nash in the black and white. I know we're trying to channel 1996 and 1997 and I get that, but just the idea that this is happening on WWE TV still feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of mind blowing in a way. And, um, you know, Vince was, we're talking about O2, so we're talking about March. We're talking about a year later, right? Yeah. One They've year. Been out a bit. Right. This is one year after WCW went down. Right. So Vince is still feeling uh, very good about himself. I mean, he's still on a high. So uh, putting uh, the NWO out here, putting Ric Flair out here is a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. It is a big deal on many levels. It's a big deal, too, because we're going to have this match coming up 
Uh, they just crashed a commercial. We're back. And it's Hogan Hall and Nash taking on The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Out first is The Rock getting a huge reaction. Meltzer would say, would have been considered real bad if any other five guys were in there. Crowd was major into Hogan, but surprisingly little buzz for the first Hogan-Austin lockup. Hogan did a crotch chop. I guess he missed the Costa show and didn't realize they don't do that sort of thing in the WWF anymore. Very sloppy in spots, but not hideous. Crowd was very into Nash, partially because it was Detroit. Nash right. laid out rock, and then Hogan hit uh, the high foot and a leg drop for the one, two, three in the middle. Big face pop for the pinfall. So we get, uh, I guess, a tease of what we're going to see at WrestleMania. Fans in the WWF, they want to cheer Hulk Hogan. Yeah, of course. And we have watched Hogan and Rock from WrestleMania, and there was a lot of Hulk Hogan fans there popping for Hulk Hogan. Un unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Because it's what you grew up with, kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, baby. We, uh, here he comes, Stone Cold Steve Austin coming out second. Look at the website underneath, stonecold.com. I guess they were trying microsites for everybody. Mm-hmm. There's a, a lot of discussion in the newsletters at the time about how disappointing the NWO has uh, NWO return has been to the office. Mm. I guess they thought it would be some sort of a magic bullet for houses or ratings. None of that is really happening in this era. Uh, I, I know they felt like, hey, we can do the invasion angle and, and we'll get a pop. And we did. But after July, boy, it just petered out pretty quickly. So then they think, OK, in February, we'll bring back the NWO. We'll inject the poison to kill the WWF. That's what Vince says he's trying to do. And we had the No Way Out pay-per-view in WO. That's where we debut them. It does okay, but I think people expected on television, boy, these ratings are going to be through the roof. But the reality is what made the NWO so cool was they kind of ran roughshod over WCW. They were positioned as the cool heels who were taking over. And I don't know that the WWF really ever totally submitted to that idea. Yeah. But I do like some of the things they did, like going to a black and white shot here for their entrance. That's pretty fun. I like that. I like it too. And I, I, I just love everything the NWO did, of course, during uh, our era. And I'm, this is kind of the first I've, I've seen of an NWO and a WWF, but I think fans love the, the war and yeah, the, the war was over. And so the fans just kind of said, ah, Let's move on to something else. They loved that. And it was, uh, you felt like as a fan, you were a part of it, right? Parties, yeah. and watching one and switching over to the other. And so uh, that was a part of it. As you can see, if you're watching on video, uh, WWE is Scout and Kirby is WCW getting just face plast plastered right now. Okay, they're going at it. Hmm. Your dogs ever um, get a little too rowdy? Mm -hmm. Like somebody gets hurt, they play rough, and somebody gets hurt? Yeah. Who's the offender there? It's always uh, Scout. Scout's the aggressor. Hmm. I got you. Yeah. So Kirby takes L's every day at your house, and he's going to take an L in Tuscaloosa this Saturday night. That's crazy. Oh. Yeah, isn't there something? Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Chewy, who's the old man in our house, as you can see, they're they're playing on the floor here. Uh, who's the old man in our house? He's you know he's always been kind of a pissed off guy, and he used to uh, attack when the when uh, Kirby or Scout would get near his food. Kirby would uh, Chewie would attack, but they got into a fight about a month ago, and Scout beat the shit out of him. So because she's now you know grown and she doesn't put up with it anymore. And so he doesn't do that anymore. Hate dog fights. Hate them. Try to break them up. You get bit. Just, but it happens. 